the big guys take a big chunk uh, <laughs> away from stuff now. Growth yeah, I mean, you're no, you can have a field day. No, nah, th these are all big points, and 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 I go back as well. I mean, when when I uh, joined the firm in in the early '90s, I mean, our practice. I mean, we were really probably, you know, you look at our personal revenue of our business. I mean, we were probably 85, 90 percent you know, public equity orient and the rest M&A. And that's really flip-flopped at this point because, uh, you know, the, the, the market really shut down. And, and we're a middle market firm. Uh, I think it's it's different for the bulge guys doing multi-billion dollar deals. I mean, we're squarely in the middle market, you know, kind of dealing with companies in the, you know, 100 to $500 million enterprise value range. And, you know, there really was no IPO market for these companies, private equity, really took the place as a growth and liquidity vehicle for these types of firms. And uh, I, I couldn't agree more with, with Jim's comments. I think, um, you know, it, it's going to be more difficult for private equity to, uh, you know, to, to fill the gap at this point. But SOX is a big issue for these firms. It's one thing for, uh, you know, HCA to come back out public. I mean, a very large substantive firm. I mean, when you're a middle market company with a $250 million market cap, these are big issues. And, you know, both from a time, infrastructure, certainly cost perspective, SOX, SOX, is, SOX makes it almost prohibitive to, uh, to come out right now. Um, you know, also pick up uh, on, on one of Tom's themes as well from the investor community standpoint of getting deals out there right now. We're, you know, within our capital markets, we're, we're certainly, and, and with the, even the smaller cap buyers of these types of stocks, we're certainly seeing, you know, more of a, you know, flight to quality, flight to uh, you know, sustain, sustainability and guys that were able to withstand the trough, uh, keep their cash flow stable through the recession, that type of stuff, and a little more resilient is going to fare a lot better than kind of the story uh, of the, you know, hey, we're, we're going to do this, this, and this in the upcoming years, you know, whether it's from a, you know, a biotech or a, you know, very low revenue, uh, uh, low you know, no income type company. Those are those are just a lot more difficult than, you know, a, a company that's got forty million of, of stable EBITDA that that has some chances to then uh, enter into new markets, both domestically, internationally, that type of thing. Just quickly, I, th I think one thing I'd want to mention though for small companies thinking about IPOs is that the economics of our business has changed dramatically over the last 10 years or so, mainly because commissions have been pushed down by the regulators fundamentally from used to be a, a 16th down to pennies or less. And it's hard to make a profit uh, trading stock of a $200 million market cap company when commissions are that low. And if we can't make money trading it, we're not going to follow it from research. And, you know, and, you know, and, you know, and yeah. I, I, I've heard very smart capital markets observers argue that in terms of the diminution of the emerging growth equity market, Regulation FD, full disclosure, was at least as damaging as Sarbanes-Oxley. Yeah. Because before FD, there was this kind of kabuki dance that we all played where if you were the underwriter of an IPO, it was assumed by the institutional community that your analyst had some measure of sort of extra kind of entree to that company and would be able to provide better information. And our institutional clients would pay us for that. And now, you know, FD, you can't, you just, you can't make any of those claims anymore. It's, so. it's harder it's to, it's harder for, for us to make money in the small cap arena. And uh, that's why I think <coughs> the quality, the flight to quality is something that you'll continue to see. But the good news for you guys is that there are many fewer competitors for you to deal with. That's true. That's true. Well, Randy, earlier Tom mentioned uh, all the money on the sidelines, and we've certainly seen and read about the billions of dollars raised by the, the private equity and the venture funds over the, over the years. But we still aren't seeing much of that money being put to uh, new use in the form of new investments. When do you see this money being put to work? And also, uh, when do you, uh, or what impact has the tightening of the credit markets had? And do you foresee a new investment model being employed by the private equity venture funds uh, that would de-emphasize their traditional leverage model. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly, 09 for not just private equity was was very challenging, and um, you know, the, the the quick numbers are basically deal volume in the private equity world was down, call it 50 percent, um, and back to kind of 02 levels. Uh, 
more importantly, probably uh, the dollars put to work were down about 80 percent. And so absolutely, there's a uh, huge amount of uninvested capital on the sidelines that uh, that these guys, you know, aren't just itching to put to work. They, they, they have to. I mean, that's their job. I mean, you know, if you sell hamburgers, you better sell hamburgers and these guys better put money to work or they're, they're sort of out of jobs. But 09 was was obviously a challenging year and, you know, both in terms of, you know, the, the economy and, and really these guys were in, in large measure worried about their own portfolios and just saving their portfolio and, and working through these issues night and day. And and there's there's going to be a major shift in, in private equity. Um, you know, there's a lot of firms out there now. I certainly don't believe, like you'll, you'll a lot of people say, that you'll have half the firms go out of business, this type of thing. It's it's tough to kill a GP. I mean, there's management fees and, and this type of stuff, but but the model will change. And certainly with, um, you know, credit and leverage being down, um, the return thresholds, therefore, uh, are going to change. And obviously with, with leverage being down, uh, equity infusions uh, as a percent of a deal uh, need to be increased. And with that, returns come down. Um, and I do think firms are definitely looking at alternative types of investments. I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily call it an investment model, but um, you know, definitely firms that would never look at a minority equity or growth equity deal in the past. Uh, we get, I'm sure, you know, you guys get the same calls every day, and you know, um, you know, hey, we we wouldn't do X, Y, and Z before, but you know, we've we've really come to look at, at these as being. Uh, interesting investment opportunities because they've got to put that capital work. Same thing in the public markets, investing in, in pipes. Um, you've seen a, a resurgence of that uh, arena as well, and um, you know I think that I think that that type of stuff will will certainly continue. And again, I'm sure you guys get the same calls as well. We get calls every week now from some of the larger funds that um, you know will come and say, "Hey, I know I told you never to show me." A company under twenty million dollars of EBITDA. I'm not going to answer the phone. Well, now we've done this intricate analysis, and those are our best deals we've ever done, and we really want to see those deals. And you know, the, these guys have the firepower to, uh, you know, to write the larger equity checks. And look, a lot of a lot of guys will talk about fully funding a deal with with equity and and bridging a financing, and some will certainly do that. That's that's a little less common than than um, you know than then I think um, you know everyone would would want you to, to know, but but definitely some will do that. But but more importantly, they'll they'll they're able to make a much larger um, equity contribution to the uh, to the transaction. So you know definitely people I think uh, this year will be uh, much more vibrant from activity. I think um, from an activity standpoint, I mean again, 09 was was more all about the the knives just falling and people just I. I can't put capital to work in, in this type of environment when even the distressed guys that were making investments, uh, equity investments, uh, in the early part of the year ended up just getting their, you know, their heads bashed in. And so I think, uh, you know, 09 was just a very, very challenging time. But again, people will definitely be, be looking to put that money to work. The, um, you know, from a seller perspective, uh, from the private equity perspective, bid asks are starting to come in. Credit markets are thawing. Um, for the larger deals, there's a very vibrant high yield market out there. Uh, you do have some new entrants coming into the the leverage loan field. Um, not all that deep, but you know, deal uh, you know deal we've got going on right now. Um, you know, we've got you know ten lenders that are seriously looking at this, and and absolutely in '09, I'd say you know it'd be a couple <laughs> if that.